What's going on everybody? Dom here from Lens Pro To Go and Lens Rentals. Welcome back to the channel. So I'm here in the studio. I'm in front of our color chart. I'm next to the Sony FX3 full frame cinema camera. So you do the math. We're about to do an ISO performance and exposure recovery test with none other than the FX3. And I know what you're thinking. You're a little late to the game here. The FX3 has been out for like over a year now. Well, my procrastination paid off because not too long ago, it got its V2.00 firmware update. It's gonna make shooting log in this camera a lot easier, a lot more straightforward. It added those Cine EI modes and also that flexible ISO mode, which lets you like change the ISO value during recording. And I'm gonna put that to use in the ISO performance test where we're gonna take a look at every single value in video that the FX3 does in and out of log, which we kind of already know this is going to be amazing for. And then after that, we're going to do an exposure recovery test where I'm going to incrementally over and under expose the video in both of its base ISOs. I usually do this in just whatever the base ISO of the camera is. The FX3 is a dual base ISO camera. It has a perfectly reasonable low base value of 800 and then an absolutely bonkers high value of 12,800. So I'm especially curious to see if one of those base ISO settings is going to be more friendly for image recovery than the other. So with all that out of the way, let's check out this ISO performance test. So I'm gonna do this first test, not in log and with no picture profile and also the creative look set to neutral so this is all baked in color and there's also no noise reduction or lens corrections going on in camera and the lowest value here we get out of log is 80 which is very very clean obviously and I'm gonna skip over a lot of values in between because there's a lot all these values are very, very clean though. And here at that low base of 800, this actually has a bit more noise happening than those sub base values, which can be the opposite case sometimes, but this is really on such a small scale. We are still super, super clean here. 2500 ISO looking great. Noise is building a tiny, tiny bit. At 3200 ISO, now if you look at that three times zoom, you can see a healthy amount of noise accumulating. It still looks really great on the whole scale though. Here at around 5,000 and 6,400 now is where I would say this noise might become noticeable in the shadows of your shot on the whole scale, but it's still doing really, really great. And 6,400 is a value where most cameras really start to fall apart and get in that unusable territory. And this thing has a long way to go before that. Eight and 10,000, same kind of thing. Shadow areas are going to start artifacting the slightest bit but the whole scale of the image is still doing excellent. The noise pattern is very uniform and neat, and it's not affecting color yet whatsoever. Okay, here is 12,800, the camera's high base value. And honestly, this did not clean up as much as I expected it to crossing over from 10,000 to here, like it does on the A7S III. Maybe that really only happens in log, or maybe they fine tune this to have a more gradual increase in noise as you move up the scale. That being said though, 12,800 is still looking pretty darn good. Really only problematic if you're looking at that zoomed in area there. And also from here on out, keep an eye on the fall off from that light coming off of the light bulb on the wall there. All right, at 20,000 ISO, there's now a light layer of noise over the whole image, maybe minus the highlight areas. Still pretty neat though, and no effect on color yet still. Okay, right here at like 40,000, I'd say this is now sufficiently noisy to the point where it might be distracting. The noise is getting larger and a bit more wild. The shadows are losing detail and clarity. And again, this gradient from the light bulb down here on the wall is getting pretty bad. Pretty amazing, 64,000 ISO on this camera looks like 6,400 ISO on a lot of other cameras, maybe like a C100 or something like that. Yeah, it's very noisy, but honestly, this would be passable for a lot of projects. 80,000, things are just starting to get worse and worse. All the aforementioned problems just getting a little bit worse.
Okay, at 128,000. This is the first high ISO value outside of log shooting, and it's looking rough. Not even the highlight areas are safe from this all-encompassing noise that's happening to this image. Two hundred and four thousand eight hundred. The image is just starting to lose contrast and saturation at this point. But I am impressed at these high values. How well the color is maintained. Typically, you're going to see a magenta or green shift when you get into these super duper high values. But the hue is looking pretty true still. Two hundred and fifty six thousand. The noise is getting really chunky here. There's lots and lots of data loss. And at three hundred and twenty thousand, this video is officially broken. There are huge huge, unpredictable blotches of noise popping up all over and this is quite distracting at this point. And at 409,600, this is the very highest value the camera does. Not much to say here, there's no hope for this image, maybe cool for an experimental film. Okay, so now we're going to do the same test, but in log and in the camera's flexible ISO mode. So this is the mode that actually lets you change ISO values during recording rather than locking you into one of those bases that the Cine EI profiles do. So given that, I shot this test metered at plus 1.3 stops overexposed, which should help keep the image clean after the LUT is applied. So the lowest value here in log is 160, and these first few are considered low ISO values. Values, they put them in these little brackets and these are all insanely clean I'm talking like zero visible noise Six hundred and forty is the first value in the main range of ISO values in log, as in not one of the low or high values and here is the low base of 800 and again There's nothing really to be said here. There is zero noise Sixteen hundred ISO. I'm still waiting for something to talk about here. Two thousand ISO. Maybe if you strain your eyes at the three hundred percent zoom area here, you'll see something. But don't hurt yourself. Thirty-two hundred ISO. Anyone see any good movies recently? Let me know in the comments section. Okay, finally, at 6400 ISO, some noise is starting to accumulate if you look hard enough, but don't squint, it's bad for your eyes. There is a little jump in noise from 8000 to 10,000, but really still splitting hairs here. And I'd say there's a proportional jump from 10,000 to the high base of 12,800. So again, no apparent cleanup at the crossover from 10 to 12.8. And I'd say now at 12,800 ISO, we can start to talk about the noise being an issue, which is insane. As long as you overexpose this S-Log video by like at least a stop, your values 160 to 12,800 are perfectly clean, which I think makes this one of the most impressive imagers out right now. Anyways, 16,000 and 20,000 still super duper clean, but again, keep an eye on the light falling off from that bulb and in this zoomed in area to get a better idea of how the noise is gonna build from this point on. Twenty-five thousand six hundred is looking as clean as some other cameras do at 800 cinema cameras, so that's amazing. All right, at 40,000, there is just now a light layer of noise occupying everything but the highlight areas. Still completely passable. Some might even call this amount of grain pleasing. At 64,000, the noise is collecting a little bit, possibly distracting at this point, and now things like that light bulb fall off are getting a bit worrisome, where the camera doesn't really know like what to make of those values. One hundred and two thousand four hundred, and we're getting sufficiently noisy here for sure, but we're in six digit ISO territory here. And this still looks decent and maybe could still be saved by some noise reduction. 
Okay, we're into the high values here, and that first one is 128,000. And this is where things started to get really bad in the non-log test, but in log, this is still looking really impressive. But now we are going to start to get some of those image fidelity issues like apparent loss of contrast and desaturation. 204,800 ISO. We're getting into worse territory here. Certain colors here are getting really confused too, like this royal blue on the color chart here is just like popping. And at 320,000, the noise is really starting to get artifacty, yet the chroma noise is still really well maintained at this value. Really all that's happening are these big blotches of cyan that are popping up in the noise, which could be worse if that was like the typical green or magenta. And the highest of the high values in log is also 409,600 which is really bad, yeah, but it's really only just starting to break down at this point, unlike the non-log test, where it started to break down right at the beginning of these high values. All right, so moving on to the exposure recovery part of this test. Both of these tests are gonna be in Sony S-Log3 in its low base of 800, and then I'm gonna do a test in its high base of 12,800 as well. And actually, when doing these tests with Sony cameras that shoot log in the past, I haven't done this, but today I metered these tests at 1.7 stops overexposed because that's just more friendly to the log gamma curve. But keep that in mind when you see on screen like one, two, three, four, five stops over or under. That's already based off of the almost two stops in camera I gave it going into the test. So just something to keep in mind because one end is going to trend way better than the other. Okay, so starting with the properly exposed image in the low base of 800 and again, this is shot 1.7 stops overexposed in camera and graded to a very normal 709 look, no frills, just very minor color adjustments. So let's take a look at the underexposure recovery and I'll give you a hint, this works a lot better than overexposure given that it was already overexposed in camera going into the test. Anyways, one and two stops under recovered basically flawlessly. Three stops underexposed also pretty much fully recovered. I did have to counter some magenta shift on my face with a little green gradually from here on out. At four stops under, this recovered really well in terms of like information loss. Maintaining color is going to get a little tricky here though. I had to desaturate my face and add a bit more green shift, but the noise here is still basically non-existent, which is amazing. And even at five stops under, I pretty much got this image all the way back to normal, which is insane considering the original image on the left. That's what you get when exposing properly for S-Log. It can be very friendly to shadow recovery if you overexpose. Obviously, I've lost a lot of color information here in the highlight region, but exposure-wise, this is all the way back to basically normal from like pitch black, which means that when we move over to this overexposure test, this is gonna be really bad since I'm already close to two stops overexposed in camera, so just keep that in mind. All right, one stop over, we're already off to a rocky start. This right here is the most the highlights will recover. And what's left after I brought those down is hard to work with. Keeping the color on my face is really finicky. I've already had to desaturate and pump some magenta into that range and it doesn't exactly get any better after this. Here are two stops over, which keep in mind is actually like 3.7 stops overexposed in camera. We have large amounts of info loss in the highlights, which are totally irrecoverable. Three stops over, this image is toast. The background is still kind of intact, but this is an experimental film at this point. Again, maybe the same one from earlier, I don't know. And I'm just gonna stop this test at four stops over because there's nothing to even gain from this. We're past the point of no return. So let's take a look at the same test in the camera's high base of 12,800. And again, the properly exposed image in the middle was taken at roughly a stop and two thirds over. So 12,800 underexposed, one stop under, perfect. Two stops under also did really well. At this point, I do have to slightly desaturate my face values again as we go through here and some unwanted magentas are creeping their way into. Three stops under also did amazingly. We are losing detail in our shadow regions for sure, but the noise is still really, really low here considering how lifted this is. Four stops over, now we are in a bit of trouble. Getting pretty lossy here. This took a lot of work to get back to normal. And here is where the difference between our base ISO values starts to arise. In the low base test of 800 ISO, 
four stops under recovered nearly perfectly. Given that, five stops under wasn't that much worse. Big loss in the shadow region, of course, but amazing considering the original image. And finally, 12,800 overexposed. Same story as the 800 base ISO test. We are already sufficiently overexposed going into the test. So these recoveries did not go well considering that. One stop over managed fine, not perfect. I already had to desaturate and add some magenta into my face and it gets pretty bad after this. Two stops over barely came back, but this is huge info loss here, plain and simple. Three stops over, see you later. And remember, this is basically closer to five stops overexposed. Highlights and mids are absolutely gone. The only areas that survived this recovery are the shadows and maybe the low mids. And again, I'll cut this test off at four stops over because Nothing can be done to save this. All right, so that is pretty much gonna wrap it up for these tests, the ISO performance and exposure recovery test with this FX3. And just to wrap things up, I think we learned two major things here. One, the FX3 may be one of, if not the best, high ISO performance cameras out right now, especially in log. In that log test, the noise didn't even become like noticeable until 10,000, and it didn't become a problem until like way after that, so. That is mind blowing and something that almost no camera out right now can touch. The second thing we learned, and probably most of us knew this already, so more of an affirmation, but it's still going to be a good move to overexpose S-Log video by at least a stop. In most shooting scenarios, where probably in the editing room, you're going to encounter the problem of bringing up shadows more often than bringing down highlights. Bringing up underexposed information is going to go a million times better then recovering overexposed highlight areas where once that information is gone, it's pretty much gone. And just like that, that's pretty much gonna do it on this video, doing this ISO performance and exposure recovery test on the FX3. So if you have any questions about how I went about doing any of those tests, a lot of that is gonna be in the description, by the way. If you have any questions about the FX3, those Cine EI or flexible ISO shooting modes, you know what to do. Drop a comment in the comment section below and we'll start a discussion. Also, if you happen to like this video, hit it with that little thumbs up button down below to let me know you liked it. And also, if you're not already, subscribe to the channel. We are dangerously close to that 100,000 subscriber milestone, so every single sub helps. If you're already subbed, you are awesome. You can actually hit that little bell button down there too to be notified whenever we post new content, which is every week. So take care, and we'll see you in the next one. Oh, 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 oh,